is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 9th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. Now, I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, can't dial in, don't want to dial in, you can always send me an email. Rifle that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Send that early if you would. And please, in the, in the comments section, just put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a slightly mixed bag. The mix is coming from the New York Stock Exchange. It's up 22 points. Otherwise, the other U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's off 41, S&P 14, NASDAQ 100, 131. Russell's down 11, semis off 54. Gold's down nine bucks. Silver's off a nickel. Lights recruit trade up a buck nine. Natural gas up almost 20 cents. That's a 7% move there. And you've got the 30 year treasury printed at 122.28. That's up about a half a point as we speak right now. Now, lead the charge dollar wise, the upside, you got Celsius holdings, 21% move. That's 31 bucks. Axon Enterprises, 17% or 30 bucks. Duolingo up 16 bucks or 11%. Regenerant Pharmaceuticals up $13. And Fleet Core Technology, a 12% dollar move that's a five percent move there to the downside the shakers super micro off 80 bucks or 23 percent that's a stinger three and a half percent for broadcom that's a 31 point move nvidia down five percent 21 points there upstart holdings off 16 31 point ooh 31% move there in Transdigim Group, back about one and a half percent, about fifteen dollars to the uh, downside. So let's begin like we have the last several days. How about yesterday's action? So do you think that that market breadth yesterday, when we, you and I looked at it, were like so confusing with regard to what the markets were doing, what the market breadth was telling us, right? We had positive market breadth. I believe it was on the ES Mini out there. And we're just kind of like, eh, this is not right. Something is, what well, was right, it was correct. And what it was telling us, we saw that rally. Now, we still closed lower on the day, but we did see that rally. So let's start off taking a look at the uh, TAS market breadth. Let's do it for the uh, two, for the ES Mini and the NQ. Let's do it for the 30-minute time frame. Let me just to refresh this screen. Let me go from the S&P numbers. Let's go right to the NQ numbers. So let's take a moment, a moment to uh, populate. You're going to look up in the upper left-hand side. What we have is 34 instruments above profile, 23 within the profiles, consolidating within there, and 45 below. So this has a bearish setup to it. That's the NASDAQ 100, four it's 30 minute time frame the s p 500 again we'll take a look at its data points 210 above 122 below so here we've got positive market breadth for the s p 164 in between so again we've got what we should see our choppy conditions at least on the 30 minute time frame that's what its signals are now let's go take a look at 6240 daily and the weekly time frame uh, let's go ahead and let's just change it to the s p just so we've got the most updated data so on the s p 500 we were bullish on the 30 minute we're bullish on the 60 we're bullish on the 240 we're bullish on the weekly it is only the daily time frame as we speak right now, and it's just barely negative, 124 above, 192 below. All right, maybe a little bit more than barely. But the S&P 500 is basically bullish out here. Now, take a look at the NASDAQ 100. You're bullish on the 60. You're bearish on the 30. You're basically at break even on the 240. You're bearish. I mean, talk about choppy market conditions. So 
We really do have a two-way market out here, and that means we certainly want to take a look at what's going on from the intraday chart. So well, at least that's the signals coming from our market breadth. So now let's go over and let's take a look at what's going on inside the ES Mini, right? The ES Mini, we had those bullish signals for 30, 60, and 240. Let's go see what those charts are doing. So here on a 30-minute time frame for the ES Mini, and the ES Mini's 30-minute time frame is the only one that has established an A to B equals CD to the downside. So if you're looking to get long the ES Mini, what you want to see out here is you want to see a bullish reversal candle. The A to B point, uh, you can draw it from the TD9 count, which took place at 5.30 this morning. So you had a nice TD9 count top. That led to price testing profile support. And then as the market opened, it crushed right through that profile support as well as its breakout area. So what's the next downside price target? Well, it'd have to be the next breakout level at 44.85.50. Am I saying that's where price is going to get to? No. What I am saying, though, is that the 30-minute ES Mini will not generate a bottom signal for that time frame until it generates a bullish reversal candle. I'd be looking for that if we did get that, as long as that bullish market breadth is still in place out there, that would be a positive and that would suggest a at least a counter trend move up to its oscillator and change line. Now it's currently printing 45.18. It doesn't matter what it's printing at now. It matters what it's printing at when that pattern forms. That's a 30 minute. On a 60 minute time frame, that was also had bullish positive market breadth out here. What we can see right now is price is uh, testing its second breakout level at 4505, but I really kind of discount that area. It's really 4495 that price is targeting. And I don't see any reason out here why price can't get to that level. It's below all kinds of support. But again, it's a 30-minute time frame that it would also be focused on because of its shorter-term pattern. And then I believe it was a 240-minute chart. And that also had positive market breadth. It may have had positive market breadth. And what that has done right now is led to a consolidation with inside its profiles. When price trades below a red oscillator and change line, odds favor, price is going to try to make its move down to support, which in this case here on a four-hour time frame is 44.80. So let's summarize this. The way I'd summarize it is we've got positive market breadth for the 30, 60, and 240. Even on the shorter term time frames, the 10 or 15, you need to see some type of bullish reversal signal, some type of pattern that would be set up there. We do not have that right now. So even though we've got that bullish market breadth, it looks to me like the ES Mini still wants to continue to move lower. Now, the real key area here of support, may not move too much lower, but the real key area of support here, I'd have to say, is on the 120-minute time frame. It, too, has a valid top. That was a TD9 count top. And it was the 30-minute and the two-hour charts that have the valid tops inside the ES Mini. So what it's doing right now is it's testing its key level of support, and that's its breakout level. That's at 44.99. We're trading right now at 44.99. Unfortunately, Two hour chart here is not this bar is not going to complete until 12 noon. So we've got basically 46 minutes left in the trading session for that to happen. If price does close below this, then where it's targeting is that Rhodes Momentum TD9 count bottom that formed yesterday. And that price level out there would be down at the, this at the 12 noon time frame. That would be down at the uh, 4482 area. Now, right now, what price is also doing, this is important to watch, what price is also doing is testing the high of that candle, the high of that candle, 44.9850. So the 120-minute chart, a 30-minute chart, and then I have to say the 10 and 15. We don't have any kind of, we've got bullish market breath for many of these time frames, but no bottoming pattern that says be patient. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Candlestick Pattern Analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick Patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. Educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to our first caller. It's Garo in California. Garo, thanks for calling, and thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm very good. How about you, Steve? I'm doing excellent and better now that I hear your voice. And I know that you <laughs> called to talk about Square, I believe. SQ is a ticker symbol out there. I can see that uh, crossover from a couple of days ago of that uh, of your two moving averages out there. Yeah. Uh, tell tell yeah. the folks what you're doing and how I can best help you. I'm just asking to see that, uh, what do you think that is this the bottom because uh, the stochastic is already oversold or there is room to go down uh, lower? What do you think? Okay, so uh, it's a great question. There is a brand new market profile that is trying to form today. So we're going to use that as our first, and I've got your charts up on my screen. So folks, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, I, for Square right now, I've got set up as the uh, daily on the left and the weekly on the right. Uh, uh, what uh, Garo does is he uses uh, different moving averages. He uses a five-day, a 21-day, 50 and 200. Those are the primary uh, averages that he uses. He also uses the parabolic SAR tool to help him enter trades, short-term, long-term. And now the question is, will this head lower? So what we're looking for is where is price trading in relationship to support or resistance? And right now, price is trading below the, and this, this is a new profile that's forming. And the new profile has very strong resistance at 64.23. The reason that I say very strong, Garo, is because when we take a look at profiles, there's basically three levels we look at. We look at where sellers are at, they're at the top of the profile, where buyers are at, they're at the bottom. And then there's a center profile line. And the center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value within that range. Turns out right now they believe that's at 64.23. So all the buyers, or in this case, which could be sellers, are lined up at 64.23. And not until price closes above that level would I say that, okay, maybe there's at least a short-term bottom or a counter-trend move with that counter-trend move then taking us up into the uh, top of that profile, which is up at 68.80. Now, I also have the weekly profiles on this uh, chart, and price is trading below the bottom of the weekly profile. It doesn't really matter as much on a Wednesday as it does on a Friday, but if on Friday price is closing below 63.63, that would also be an indication that price is likely to continue head lower. Now, that's coming off of your charts that I'm looking at. I would like to switch over to my white background charts. 
which I'm going to do here momentarily. And then we're going to see if there's any other patterns that are out there. And here we're going to take a look at folks daily, weekly, monthly, and we'll throw up a 30-minute time frame chart. When we look at the white background charts, what we'll see here is a Rhodes Mintum mm -hmm. indicator top and a Wave 7 top. That's a letter G. That was actually confirmed on the trading day of August 1st. Now we can see that prices moved lower, and price came back all the way to its breakout level. Yesterday, it actually closed below that, which was at 63.33. We're trading just below that as we speak right now. This garo is telling me that price is likely to head lower. The head lower target for me would be at 57.78, and that comes off of the weekly time frame chart. And on a weekly time frame chart, we can see that last week was the confirmation or the completion of a TD9 count top. And now with price below profile, at least at this moment in time, and below that red oscillator and change on at 64.38. Again, it'll make more, it'll make it'll be more important on Friday than it is at 11.21 on Wednesday, East Coast time. But likely if price remains below those levels, 57.78 would be my next target of support. And then finally below that, it would be at 42.33. So the answer to your question is my chart suggests that no, this is not a bottom inside of uh, square. Now those with the daily, weekly, and monthly, just to complete this so that we get the intraday kind of feel for it, we'll look at a 30-minute time frame chart, see if there's any kind of signals here. And on a 30-minute chart, what we got yesterday was a TD9 count bottom. That took place between 1.30 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And that most certainly did lead to a rally. And that rally on this 30-minute time frame turns out, let me see if this, is this possible? Son of a gun it is. Don't see this too often. Garo, the bottom of its 30-minute profile, both the bottom and the center are at the same price. Again, a strong resistance level, 64.56. And we can see that the rally this morning, we saw that little gap to the upside. What was the actual high? 64.55. What's the actual resistance point? 64.56. Yeah, this has not turned any kind of a corner, not just yet. Yeah, very good. That, very, very good. Excellent, uh, well, excellent. And, and your work. You. So yeah, that, that was very convincing, very much. Thank ah, you, sir. Okay. I appreciate Perfect. it. Thank you. Bye -bye. You bet. You bet. Always good to speak with Garo. Of course, folks, I would love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 is the number. I'm going to go back to those uh, ES mini charts just for a quick moment because I was on a different screen. Sorry about that. But here are those ES mini charts. Just to go back to them, we can see that on 120 minute chart right now, price is trading below that key level 44.99 out here. So we are headed back towards yesterday's lows. Uh, inside of the uh, ES mini will take those out that I don't know we do have bottom signals down there on the uh, five hour time frame chart so I'd be uh, the five hour time frame chart does not complete until uh, 2 p.m. today so that bar is not going to help us just yet but does I, well, look when we were doing the analysis everything was pointing to lower price out here and again we said let's pay attention to the 30 minute chart now we're in bar number seven so what's the next level of potential support out here I'd have to go with the 4485 50 level. Again, the 30 minute chart needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom pattern out there. So I'll make sure I'm on, yeah, I'm on the right screens. Okay, so let's get to uh, we did have a couple of questions that came in. I haven't checked my phone here recently. But the first one was from um, I think it was from Robert. And he wanted to take a look at Walmart. And the question was looking for profiles and seasonality. So we've got the Walmart ch charts up on our screen up here. And Walmart today if Walmart is able to close above, I'll give you this number, it's trading above it right now, 160.94, it negates a TD9 count top on a daily time frame. So I, I know you want the profile levels. Well, the profile levels for the daily time frame from Walmart are down at uh, 155.83. That's the top of the profile. So there's really no profile level on a daily basis that I can provide to you that's going to assist you. I'm going to just check my other screen just in case by any odd chance there's a new profile attempting to form. No, nothing that's attempting to form as I've got it. So the daily time frame chart says if we close above that TD9 count high, again, that TD9 count high, I believe, was up at the uh, 160.94 level. Walmart wants to head higher. On a weekly basis, prices trading above a TD9 count top that formed all the way back here the week of April 22nd. That was back in 2022. That high 
160.77. So the next level you're looking for here, Rob, is this price close above that. If it does, it suggests higher price. Where's its profile level that you were asking for? Well, that's all the way down at 157.71. So the profile levels you were looking for are 157.71 and 155.83. No resistance because we're above the top of those profiles. And that includes the monthly time frame. Now, the monthly, we're too, we're too close to the beginning of the month. But again, a close here above on a, at the end of the month. Above the high from April of 2022, that's at 160.77, negates those topping signals out there. Now, on a very short-term basis, we have a TD9 count top for Walmart that is going to complete here in the next four minutes. What that says to you and I is that what price should do is we should see a little bit of a retracement. That retracement should take us back to support. That's going to be at about 161.21. That happens to be the top of that profile. That happens to be the oscillator and change line. But where the real counter trend move on a move lower should end would be at the price point of 168.89. If it doesn't end there, that tells you there's something else going on on a 30 minute time frame chart. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back and I'll give you the seasonality for Walmart. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, up, folks. I'm going to show you the uh, seasonal pattern here for Walmart momentarily. I'm going to change screens because last time I did it on that other screen, things went a little bit wild. So we're going to take a look at the seasonality. This is a 50-year uh, seasonality pattern for Walmart. So we saw that Walmart is really ignoring the seasonality, so to speak. We are still in a short-term favorable cycle here for Walmart. And what I mean by that is it typically bottoms like the market does in the July time frame uh, over the last 50 years for Walmart on average has been right around the beginning of August and then we typically see a rally into August 16th so it looks like another week's rally out there and then we should see Walmart if it were to follow the seasonal pattern move lower like the market into the mid-October time frame that's what it's done over the last 50 years out there if you take just look at the last 15 um, the last 15 says okay we really are in that favorable seasonal cycle that takes again price up into that august 16th level so rob i hope that helps you out thanks much for taking the time to write in and have a wonderful wednesday uh, nicholas was interested in the smh in fact why don't i stay on this black background charts because nichols was interested in the smhs from an a to b equal cd to the downside pattern and what he picked up on and very key was that yesterday what price was doing was it was testing its swing point potential swing point of an a to b equals cd that was a swing point from right here of august 3rd with volume that swing point at 6.7 million shares and yesterday did volume of 8.4 did that make it an a to b equals cd to the downside and the answer there was no and the reason is because price needed to close below the b point not just test it and now we are trading below 152.16 that's the B point. Don't know where price is going to close today. The volume so far, 3.5 million shares. Well, that swing point has only 6.7. So what this is suggesting now, Nicholas, is that today, if we get a close below 152.16, what we will see is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. The one-to-one -one price projection level would be 147.53. We can see that the retracement, the B to C retracement, was less than 0.618. It was 48.61 to be exact. That typically results in more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. The 1.272 expansion, 145, and the 1.618 would be 141. Still today, though, price must close below 152.16 to generate an AB equals CD down pattern out there. So that's the SMHs. Now, one more thing, I'm gonna switch back to the white background screens. We're gonna take a look at, is there any other level of support, potentially, that price is trading into? And what I mean by that, we get to those charts, is gonna be, where's that weekly oscillator on change line? I don't know the answer to that, but it's going to be revealed to us. Okay, perfect. Well, not perfect, but we are trading below that right now. So we were trading above. So here's, the, but here's the other level of support that we can take a look at on the SMHs. And what's interesting is it shows up on the white background chart. It's not on the uh, black. Always interesting for Stevie. But here, what we can see is if this is a, if a, this is only a counter trend move for the weekly time frame. That's what's really important for each of us to understand here is where price should find support would be at the center of that bearish structured weekly profile. And that number is 148.47. So that would be the next area of potential support, 148.77. The price and remember the one to one A to B equals C D gets you down to one forty seven fifty three. So we'll use that as basically the range out there, uh, and that would be the area to be watching and observing. If price gets below that, then we're looking at that further move lower, whether it's one forty five or maybe it's one forty one, which is the bottom of its uh, weekly profile. So Nicholas, I hope that helped you out with regard to the A to B equals C D to the downside. And uh, thanks much for taking the time to write in. The next request coming from Bob in Spokane. He wants to take a look at Palantir. PLTR is a uh, ticker symbol out here. I think you're looking for profile levels, support or resistance. So let's start with the support area. The only support level that you have right now in the daily time frame is going to be its breakout area. And that's at 1495. Now, this formed a Rogeman to indicator top. It did that when it generated this uh, bearish uh, separating line that was back on the trading day of August the 2nd. Now we are trading below the bottom of its profile, 1644. A close below that today suggests 1495. That does not mean that 1495 is the bottom. 1495 to 1518 is going to be a very key area for you to watch and observe, Bob. Why? Because that was a bullish structured 
weekly profile. And if it's just a counter trend move to the downside, where price should find support on a weekly basis at 1518. So that means Friday's close, not where it trades to today or tomorrow. But on Friday, you most certainly want to be able to take a look at that because we're right now we're suggesting that's where price is headed to. We'll get a, a confirmation of that, I think, when we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart. So let's go ahead and pull that over, see what that's communicating to you and I. And what we'll see here is no bottom pattern. We see a Rosemont to indicator signal that's been triggered, but that needs a, a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. We are in wave number seven to the downside. That just will extend itself after this bar completes right now. Uh, that needs a higher low. So there are two potential bottoming signals out here that could lead to a rally inside of Palantir. But even if it does, it's just a short-term rally based upon the signals that would be generating a bottom pattern out there. And the rally should run out of steam at about 1629 out there. So Palantir likely targeting at least this breakout level of 14 on the weekly basis, you want to watch 1518. If you close below that, that could be telling you about a further move lower, and 1222 would be the likely price target. Let's take a look at our next question out there, and that's coming in from a guppy inside the Tiger's Den as well, and it's SMCI that we're going to take a look at. And SMCI, I believe that the McGuppy is long both of these, and what price has done today is it has pulled back with a vengeance. Big volume. It's already done 7 million shares today. That's pretty big for this instrument. But what it's also done is found support potentially, McGuppy, and that's at its breakout level of 260, 254. That's a key area to watch. If price closed below that, then we're likely looking at 218.51 as being a target. Now, before we get back to the 218.51 area, there is another level of support that you'd like to keep your eye on. That is the top of the weekly profile. And that top is at 253.33. Don't know the price is going to get down there because right now we're holding a 260.254. Of course, when you get to that breakout level, let's say on a daily time frame, we like to see intraday charts confirm that that is a key level of support because it forms some type of intraday bottoming signals. When we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, we got nothing. So on a 30-minute basis, forms a TD9 count top, forms a TD9 count bottom. Price runs right up into its breakdown resistance level, 353.77, and out a day, it's curtains. So I don't have any kind of bottoming signal on a 30-minute basis, even though the oscillator and change line will be incorrect on this next chart when it changes to 10 minutes, because it still has a 30-minute. The 10-minute chart does have a TD9 count bottom. So what that says is you really want to watch the low, and that low is 261.60. If you close below that, that says lower price. If you close above, this is on a 30-minute basis, a 10-minute basis. If you close above, this is a bullish structured profile. If you close above 351.70, then odds favor that what SMCI will do is have a counter trend move up to about the 283 46 level. So that's your SMCI for your 10, your 30, your daily, your weekly, and your monthly time frame. So hope that helps you out. Let's go on to your next request. It's a twofer. And the next request is for MGNI. We're going to take a look at MGNI when we get back from this break. And then we're going to look at the XLE for Hector, for PFE, for Alton. And of course, I would love to hear from you as well, folks. Steve Rhodes with TFNO. We're going to go take a look at from the big chill. We're going to look at QCUE out there. Be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at MGNI. That is a mag night out here, having a horrible day, down with about 1.5 million shares. It's pretty big volume. It's below all kinds of support levels on a, a daily time frame. Uh, so let's go to the next area of support. This appears, we really won't know McGuppy until Friday, but right now we would classify this as being more than just a counter trend move to the downside. And the reason is because we're trading below that 1291 level. Now, if on Friday, Price closes at 1291 or above, it could be, could be a counter trend move. There are really two levels of support that it's really dealing with now. And that's at 1291, which it's trading below, as well as uh, the um, uh, the 12, six, let me make sure I get this right here. Uh, on the uh, monthly profile, oh, I can tell you exactly what it is, uh, 1255. So 1255 to 1291 is really the support range out here. Um, so it is trading back into a level of support. But if those areas fail, then what uh, this would be signaling to you and I is a move back to 1183. And if 1183 does not hold, then we're looking at 1074. Now, on a 30 minute time frame, you are forming bar number eight. By the way, so too is the ES Mini as we speak. So the ES Mini at 1130. Uh, completed bar number uh, seven. I did see that bar number eight is lower, uh, made a lower low than bar number seven. So you could get a TD nine count bottom on 30 minute time frame uh, by 12 noon out here. Uh, the way you will, the one that would form between 12 noon and one o'clock is how I should say it. But here you've got bar number eight that's also forming. So MGNI could have that counter trend move. So you really have to monitor those areas of support, which are the weekly 1291 and then the level that I gave you on the monthly time frame. So I hope that helps you out, McGuppy. And uh, best of luck to you on those trades. Hector and Patty, they want to take a look at the energy sector out here. I should read a question. It says... Uh, is they actually finally confirming a run to the top with volume and uh, possible breakout levels? What are the numbers to watch out here? Well, what we can see is that we will, or the XLE, will negate its daily TD9 count top today so long as price at day's end closes above 87.73. We're trading right now at about 88.79. So this is suggesting, Hector, on a daily time frame, breakout. Again, price needs to close above that level. However, we can't just stop right there. That's the real use, and that's the real reason of using these multiple time frame charts. Just imagine if all that we did to fly our airplane was only looked at one thing. 
Yeah, we probably wouldn't be flying the airplane real long because what you and I also know, Hector, is that prices, even though it's breaking out on a daily basis, trading right up into where the sellers are located on the weekly time frame. In order to prove itself that there really is a breakout and wants to get back to those prior highs, you and I need to see a close above 89.13 to be exact. And we're trading 88.86. Now, if we do get that, then what that's going to do is signal move up to 94.71. And at 94.71, we've got a couple of different tops out there, but that is the top of its monthly profile. So it looks great on the daily as we speak right now because price is taking out a TD knockout top. However, the weekly sellers say hold your horses. And if those price can get back those past those weekly sellers, well, then you're up to 94.71. So Hector and Patty, I hope that helps you out. Those are the numbers to be paying attention to and to watch with regard to the energy sector. That is the XLE. Let's go to our next request. This next request coming in from Alton. And Alton wants to take a look at Pfizer. PFE is a ticker symbol out there. He's in it. He's not happy with its performance, and let's go take a look at it. So if we're looking for patterns out here, I don't see anything on the daily base that sticks out at me, but that's okay. You're in it, and you're in it to win it. What is going on on the daily time frame? Well, right now what you've got is a consolidation with inside profile levels. Those profile levels, support is at 34.90, and resistance is at 36.54. So you're just kind of consolidating with inside that. Now what you'd really like to see is the weekly chart generate a bullish reversal candle. At the present time, it's a bullish piercing candle. In order to retain that bullish piercing candle, it has to close at least halfway inside the body of last week's candle session really half within a halfway plus one tick at least to the upside out there now if it doesn't close above the uh, daily uh, it also needs to really close above the bottom of its weekly profile and that number is 3585 so i'd watch 3585 as well the reason that's important is because if price closes below that you'd have two consecutive weeks below the bottom of a bullish uh, well it's not a bullish structure profile it's just a regular profile I'm going to take that back. Skip everything that I just said, which is probably pretty easy for you to do because probably nobody was listening. And don't listen to any of that. Let's get back to the reality here. And the reality is if it forms a bull, what you want to see on a weekly basis, it's a bullish reversal candle and a close back inside that profile. And that would just simply mean a close above 3585 at week's end. On a monthly basis, prices pulled back to support. That was its breakout level. That breakout level being 3576 out there. So the daily... You're consolidating. I don't see the bottom pattern out there. The weekly might form a bottom pattern. We won't know till Friday. The monthly could be at a bottom pattern with price pulling back to its breakout level. Um, so that's what I've got for you on Pfizer, Alton. I hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for the request. The next request coming in uh, from the Big Chill inside the Tiger's Den. And the Big Chill wants to take a look at ticker, ticker symbol CUE. And CUE is trading out right now at about 361. It's trading below profiles. It's trading below a TD9 count bottom. It negated that pattern a few days ago. Uh, it did find support at its breakout level of 349. So what's this thing doing? It's trading below support uh, it's trading below resistance which is up at 375 and above support which is 349 no bottom pattern there on a weekly time frame you're trading below support and if price closes below the low from the week here of july 7th that's going to be a key level for you to watch that key level is 414 you close below 414 no that's not the right area steve you read the wrong number 345 if you close below 345, odds favor move to 296. I'm going to still say right now odds favor move to 296, but price needs to get below at least the 349 level. That's that daily TD9 count breakout area. The monthly chart has a TD9 count bottom, and price has just been consolidating sideways. So I don't see anything wrong with the monthly. The weekly's not great. The weekly could actually be setting up an A to B equals C to the downside. It makes that swing point that you and I looked at really important. And with inside the daily, it doesn't look really that great. So I hope that helps you out. Big chill. Wish I could provide you with better information. But it is what it is. The next request coming in from Lee. Let's take a GLATF. So let's see if we can pull that up on our screen out here. GLATF is, drum roll please, that is the Global Atomic Corporation. 
I went to see, how about that? That's Is that is that a coincidence? There are no coincidences. Went to see that Oppenheimer movie last night. Man, was that a long movie. So talk about Atomic Corporation. What the heck is this doing? It looks like it wants to head lower. You're trading below everything. Daily, weekly, monthly profile levels. You're below oscillator and change lines. The only possibility of a bottom here could come over the course of the next three days, not including today. The next three days, that's Thursday, Friday, and Monday. And you at least have to see a tick below bar number six, which is 101. That could then establish a TD9 count bottom. But we really have to come back to that, I would say, next week. I don't see, other than that, I don't see any other kind of bottom on a daily time frame or weekly time frame. If you're asking me, Lee, where's price headed to? 43 cents is its price target. That is the weekly breakout level. Now we come back to this break, folks. We're going to have about two minutes to go. We're going to take a look at ONON for Tim. We'll try to take a look at Boyle or at least Natural Gas and the NQs for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, so for Tim and we're taking a look at ONON -O -N right now. This is just uh, consolidating with inside its uh, daily time frame. 3618 is the top of the profile where sellers are at. 3391 is a bottom. If price can uh, take out its uh, high, the high of the daily time frame that we're looking at, that is a Rhodesman Dominicator top, is up at 3683. 
The price can do that, Tim. Then where price is headed to is 44.48. It has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside on the weekly time frame. It confirmed that a couple of weeks ago when it passed the B point with volume. The volume was 20 million shares uh, that it uh, that was going against 16 million shares. So uh, what you want to do is you want to watch that uh, high that I gave you in the daily time frame. You get above that, you are headed higher. We're going to go take a look at natural gas. Natural gas appears to be generating a change in trend signal. Now, it will do that on the weekly time frame if we close above the top of its profile, 285. That doesn't mean that it's a free ride to the upside, but it looks like it would be a free ride up to about the $3.36 area out here. That's its weekly TD9 count breakdown level. So you got a nice buy the D point bottom on the monthly. Resistance there is free. 19. You're above resistance on the weekly, but of course it's only Wednesday. The daily is also trading above resistance, so everything looks pretty good here. Today I'd be watching the all. I'd be watching today's high because we have a TD nine count top on the 60 minute basis up at three dollars and one penny, three dollars and two cents out there. If price closes above that, the rally will continue. But just know that that is your resistance point. Let's go take a look at the NQs out here. The NQs see what they are doing here intraday. Any kind of signals. So let's get those things to populate. Come on, come on, open up here. No idea why it is taking long. Hmm, not what I had hoped for with a two minute countdown and trying to get everything in. Wow, that's really weird. That's really weird. Okay, hey, weird is, weird is what it is. So the only bottom pattern that I see right now, I see a 10 minute TD nine count bottom. And that says if uh, you see a close on a 10 minute base, I'll just give you that because it's all like, well, I can't even pull that open right now. Son of a gun. Well, my apology for that SNP. Uh, the uh, charts just didn't, everything was happening for us. It just wasn't happening for you and I right now with regard to these charts. But folks, stay tuned. Great programming lined up. I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there and take care.